There is an allegation that the 2019 budget padded, uh, is padded, by, by the way. Um, there is a, a report that has showed that it's been padded with an extra 12.5 billion naira. This was revealed by the chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, Bolaji Owa Sonye. Now, he also added that the commission prevented 9.2 billion naira from leaving the government's purse about a month ago. And the question is, what exactly is going on? Well, Alester Wilcox and uh, Timmy Tokwekolawale are still here in the studio. I'm going to start with you, Timmy. Apparently, 12.5 billion naira has been allegedly padded into the 2019 budget. And we're almost at the close of 2019. I'm sure if we said, if we called for a report card of what has been done with the budget, we probably will be really, really surprised. But... This isn't the first time we've heard about budget padding, and we all know what happened. It was, a, you know, a noise, and then it went to, it just went cold. Do you think that this would, in any way, ruffle any feathers, or it's just going to be another drama, and then it will go cold? Yeah, it's a good job um, ICPC is doing, and uh, I, I must say, well, I don't, I don't know what, as, as you have said, it's allegedly, mm -hmm. but I sh you should understand how um, the the two. Um, um, there's two angles to National Assembly, how it works is the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives. Yes. It's more of, more of lobbying. Mm -hmm. So I must say categorically that um, I've come to you, you're chairman of a committee, and I don't belong to your committee. For instance, your committee of, uh, of uh, agri or you're in aviation, and uh, then I need my, my people need to do a project, and I know that I can come to you and let you know that, come, can you please approve a project for me of 200 million for my community mm -hmm. to be put under your budget? Although I'm, I'm, I just belong to a committee that's um, for custom or whatever. So I've come to you and said, okay, fine, can you just put it for me? So what's, what you, you, they, they should just and take And so the their please time. I'm saying, I have to ask for you to increase or inflate it? it it's not inflating, it's putting that in your budget for me. Like it's lobbying, it's all about lobbying. In, this, in, the, in the House of Representatives Senate, all, all of this is... But how, how impactful, how beneficial will these paddings be for the people? Is the, it really the, for the, the people question. or for the politician that is involved? Yeah, that's why, that's why we need the CSOs, we need the uh, non-governmental agency to, to trace where this comes from. And well, the ICPC and, says that they will, that they have traced these monies uh, and they're saying that they are going to announce the states in which they have tracked these monies to, all the projects that have been allocated to the states, they will um, publicly talk about those projects. So there, there's going to be a lot of name calling. Now, according to the ICPC boss, he says, um, budget padding is still prevalent in ministries, departments, and agencies because oversight is not strong enough. Well, uh, I, I want to say, see, sometimes we dramatize with words. Sincerely, we dramatize too much with word. I would have expected the ICPC chairman, as he's coming up with such a, a statement, not to give us, not to throw something to the people and let the people start shouting, hey, 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 budget padding, budget padding. As at a responsible organization like ICPC should come up with details. Detail report, yeah. Detail report of what he's talking about. Well, look, in 2019 budget, we discovered that. Susan, so so money, uh, money is inflated. I, I don't think at this point you're talking about project padding. You should be talking about inflating of the cost of a project. Good. So we use the wrong terminology just to, because project padding came up in 2000 and, uh, is it 2016? Yes. That we had of project padding first of all. Mm -hmm. And then that has become the signature for any abnormality of our budget. And people just say project so padding. you think this is being overly sensationalized? Overly sensationalized. Yes. Because there is no details. Very, very vague in details. And I think it's shameful for an ICPC and the of to come up on air to talk this kind of thing. Just to incite the people. And for me, that's just to incite the people and make the people feel, oh, what's happening? Now? In but according to him, he's saying, look, the ICPC's job is to go into government agencies, yes. look at how public funds I is agree. used. And he's saying, a month ago, we restrained 9.2 billion naira from going out. What happened was that when we looked at the budget uh, and what it had been used, uh, you know, appropriated and how it was being used, I can tell you authoritatively that there is still budget padding. This is because the oversight is not strong enough. I have, if you have personnel votes that is not exhausted and people do not complain 
that salaries have not been paid. You can tell that someone has made a budget proposal of more than what is needed to pay salaries. That is budget inflation, inflating a budget. Okay, we well, call it padding. Well, that's, but, what, that's, again, that's the question again, I asked not again, because, not again, because I agree with him that uh, oversight is weak. Even the National Assembly member that's supposed to do oversight, what do they do? They get to the place and say, what is the need for us? Which is the in thing? And for which ICPC's responsibility is? I don't care if you come up to tell us you stop nine point something billion from leaving the treasury, where is it? On whose ministry? Get let, name and shame. But that's what they say. Because they right now, do. right now, what is happening right now is, oh, I've thrown the kites because I see we, there's a kite somewhere. We've thrown the kite up. People will now start going under. To now start asking questions, sir, what do we do to, to, to you know, it's, you are your boy, so what do we do to, to pallet? That's what happens. And at the end of the day, we will not get any details. And I can show you, you will not get any details on this matter. Instead of versationalized, or there is a kite being flown so that something else could happen. And that is part and part of government of corruption that is going on in the country. I, I mean, ICPC, EFCC, all of them are not exemption because they are all, some, most of them are neck deep in some of these things that happen. For me, I think we have budgeting processes need to be better managed. It, it may not be able to get 100%. The government is doing a lot, like this centralized payroll system, IPAS, which with the electors we are kicking against last time. So if you said my money was better for personal cost, and then that money was not spent, yeah, the, what, what, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, which agency is that? Is it covered by the IPAS? If you go by the IPAS, then, then you are talking nonsense because central uh, uh, salaries are centralized in ministries and so many departments. Although there are some government departments that still operate as, uh, like all those uh, companies and those uh, uh, corporations that are still existing, they might. So, but there are payrolls, there are payrolls to, to check, there are internal auditors to check. So, you don't. Uh, I, I but are they really being checked? No, of course. If, look, the civil servants has one of the best internal control systems. It's just that these days, it controls are being valued because if you say in personal costs, okay, every month there is a payroll. But oh, do you understand? There's a payroll and there is a processes for approval because that payroll must emerge from accounts or from uh, human resources and go to audit for confirmation and then go back to accounts for payment. So except you are telling me that you just allocate money, then that's the wrong system. You just allocate money and say, okay, I'm giving you a salary. Okay, uh, Mary Ann, this is your own. Alessa, this is your own. This then that is not the civil service. That's not the government establishment. So something, we need to have more details as to what the ICPC is doing. I agree that there is budget inflation. For instance, I, I don't think anybody can do much on, 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 on personal costs. They can do more on, uh, on uh, purchases, on uh, procurement. For instance, where, uh, where, where this iPad now should cost 100000 you can say this is 500000 which is what they do. That is where ICPC has to telling us what is happening. Don't just vague things and make Nigerians unhappy. <laughs> He's, he's asked past on my question. A lot of people would be expecting that the ICPC must have been doing its due diligence and not just waking up today to tell us that there's been budget padding. Oh, yes, there has been, but what have you done up until now? Why wait until the 20, 2019 budget? What happened when the issue of budget padding was raised in 2016? And what happened to 20, 2017 and 2018 and before you get to 2019? Do you think that the ICPC is just trying to say, hey, we're here and we're working? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a challenge to, to this agency, the ICPC of this world, the EFCC, to, to monitor or to input an M and E into all these processes that um, we should have, um, we should, we should have um, we should an evaluation process, a monitoring and evaluation process at the end of the day. How this, the, the moment, because it takes processes, you get mobilized for projects then you get your final, final bunch of what you have input into the project. So it's, it's, it's more on, on, on um, this ICPC, everybody's just, they're trying to do their own job too. So let's, let's believe that they, they just need to do their due diligence, maybe from the time past and now. And, uh, but what I think basically is that we, we need more of um, non-governmental, like I mentioned the other time, and people are actually doing it. We need monetary agencies to start, okay, fine. Um, how, much is, how much of a project is going to so 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 constituency? It, was it, was the project was was it implemented? Was it concluded? What happened and what but happened? But you see, so, there are people, there are certain civil societies, Dito for Serap and 
some other people who have tried with the use of the FY, but there's certain very sensitive information that they don't get, no matter how they ask. And that's why you see Sarah always going to court and saying, oh, open this to us and this is. It seems like an exercise in futility. So could it be that we have an accountability problem in this country where nobody feels the need to open the books and say, we have nothing to hide? Um, to, to a large extent, we will not, de we will not deny the fact that we, we, we are sitting on a ticking time bomb. Um, Nigeria as a whole, um, the, our processes is not really open. It's not, it's not an open book. And we, I, I, we agree to him, we aim on this particular issue because um, for, for us to say, OK, fine, a, a, a project has been approved. And at the end of the day, you, you, you cannot even account for a project that's been approved, that's been, that, have been, that have been signed, concluded as of 2017. And another government came and tried to start with the same project all over again. And it's also approved by the same, same body. So it's, it, I think it's, it's our process system and our monitoring system that I think is very, very weak. And I think we, that's what we should start to look into and not just make noise here. And the major thing is the, the kind of people we, we put in, in the forefront to represent us. I think we should start asking ourselves that who are the people that represent us? Are they actually in the interest of the people or in the interest of, them, of themselves or in the interest of their godfathers? Because if you, if you're actually in the interest of your people, definitely you want to be sure that what belongs to your people, you get them, and you must make sure that it gets to your people. And then I, I still think that there, we still need a, a third party, maybe an independent agency that will be doing this monetary and evaluation for us to make sure that the the, the, the value of what you claim that your project is worth is the same value of what gets to the to, to the final destination. So I, 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 it's just it's just a conscientized. Um, efforts to make sure that we are not just sitting and um, um, going, going through round and round and round. To make, we, we, we demand a good country. We don't have anywhere else to run to. This is our home. Nigeria is our home. So we don't, we, if, you, if we are looking keenly into what become of us, because we, we are more of, of a laughing stock to the international community, yes. Uh, in a statement made by the US Embassy today, saying that the election of Kogi and uh, Bayesa is um, it's not about Nigeria. It's all about the, the, the impression, impression that the international community is looking forward to as far what the Nigeria thing is all about. So we should, we should not be, make, make ourselves a laughing stock when it comes to um, some, <laughs> so when it comes to some level of decision making. And we should be, because the more, the more we do for our people, the more we, we we, we become a, a true frontier for, for good democracy. Okay. That is the point we, we start realizing that okay. all international bodies will, will be ready to work with us. If not, we'll be in deniers of major things, even waivers and all, when, even when it comes to... Okay, finally, in, in, a few words, Alester, and I mean it, a few words. <laughs> we always are quick to point fingers at our leaders, and I'm not in any way absolving them of you know, doing wrong. But the, the people who aid and abate them are Nigerians. We the people, the guys in the civil service who take the kickbacks and, the, and say, if you don't give 1,000, we're not go find that paper. We're also part of the problem. So why are we always, when we say corruption, we point first to the man who's at the helm of that, affairs? That is, that's the unfortunate narrative. The unfortunate thing is that the narrative has been like that. And like uh, Tokwe said, it's a, it's a conscience thing. It, and a time for us to really change these narratives. Because really and truly, we're looking at the big thieves or the big criminals and forgetting that the, uh, uh, the, the, the foxes that really spoil the vine, they are the many. And that is the civil service. Because who are those implementing this budget? How many political heads do you have? In a, in a ministry, you have just a minister, maybe two uh, political heads in a ministry. And the entire gamut of that ministry is the career civil servants. And we blame the leader. And we blame the minister. Because, they, I mean, the budget is run. They prepare the budget. The minister oversees. They prepare the budget. They, sometimes eh, the directors are, I mean, takes more. So we have a problem of individuals. And unfortunately, we blame leaders alone. The same people that will steal the money that's meant to build the road. He knows that. This money that was meant to build XYZ Road, we shared it. He has gone to buy a house or somewhere. When he comes out to talk in public, say, our leaders need to do something. You are a leader 
in that ministry. So we need to hold the entire gamut of the civil service responsible. Because like you are talking about budget padding now. Who, who padded this budget? Is it the political head? It's just one person in the ministry. If it's, if, 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 if it's in a paracetal, maybe they appoint a four-man uh, committee. I said a few words. A four-man committee. Sometimes mm. these things are very passionate, my dear. Okay. A four-man committee. Well, we at, have to go. <laughs> we have the to rest go. are the civil servants. We have to so go. We Thank have you. an accountability issue number one. All I'm right. Fix it. Thank you very much, Alastair Wilcox. Uh, to me, talk talk by Kola Wale, both a political analyst. Thank you for being part of the conversation. It's been an it's interesting It's always my pleasure. Very well, thank you. thank you for staying with us. We'll take a break and bring you our PLUS report. And when I return, I'll give you my take. The Nigerian Senate has stressed the need for urgent amendment of the National Procurement Act. The bill to the Act titled the Bill to Amend the National Council on Public Procurement and Bureau of Public Procurement Act scaled the second reading on the floor of the Senate as lawmakers said the current Act is untenable and will circumvent the reforms expected to be made in the nation's procurement process. Lawmakers also criticized the lack of inauguration of the National Procurement Council by successive governments and urged, and urged the current administration to inaugurate the council to spearhead expected reforms. The objective of this bill is to amend the extant provisions of the Public Procurement Act 2007 by providing that the procurement of goods and works from the Ecological Fund Office be conducted through a direct procurement process as provided for in the Act, rather than the open competitive bidding process used in all other cases. The bill also seeks to amend the Act to increase the number of days within which a payment shall be deemed a delayed payment under the Act. Mr. President, this proposed amendment is simple and uncomplicated. It merely recommends very unambiguous amendments to specify provisions of this act in order to improve the operational efficiency of our procurement process without delaying, without adversely affecting the underlying purpose and intent of the act. Mr. President, as I'm talking to you and we're leading this debate here, I'm aware that the Procurement Council that is necessarily supposed to fix and lay out the policy guidelines for the enforcement of this act had not been put in place by successive governments. And therefore, it becomes necessary, especially against the backdrop of our desire now to right the wrongs or apparent lacuna in the past uh, legal instruments that we have in executing government policies, moving, for instance, our budget period to appropriate time in order that implementation becomes easy and meets the reality on our ground. There will be certificate of no objection. And one of the main reasons why you see the Bureau of Public Enterprise, which I also want to suggest, that that enterprise as presently constituted must be unbundled. Must be unbundled. And while the bill is under consideration at the committee level, one critical area we must look at is the current composition of this particular board. You notice that three quarter of the agencies of the government goes after this certificate of no objection. And this is in a bid to circumvent the process. That is in a bid to ensure that proper people who are fit enough to do this job have come out of the process. The last 12 years have revealed the inadequacies the loopholes, the lacunas that are in the Act. Like one of our colleagues indicated, we may pass the appropriation bill 2020 before the end of the year, and the implementation commences from January. But if this Act remains as it is today, would unnecessarily cumbersome and lengthy processes of bidding. The time we would have gained from passing the budget in time could be lost. It's time for my take. It's less than 24 hours to Kogi and Bayoso elections. The IGP has read the riot attack to all vote buyers and ballot box snatchers saying they will have themselves to blame. 
Is that enough of a deterrent to those who are planning to cause violence and mayhem tomorrow? How long will we keep going through this endless cycle of election violence and malpractice? I mean, we cannot have a reformed and changed Nigeria if things don't work. If we, the people, allow those our, ourselves to be used or, or, or by these politicians to destroy our electoral process, do not sell your votes, Nigerians. Do not sell your votes. It is your power. It is your right. It is your voice. Don't let anyone tell you different. And that's it. I'm Mary Annika. It's been Plus Politics. Have a lovely day.